and then all we do is simply screw that in. Helps if you take the lens cap off first, of course. Hello everyone and welcome to a very rare video for me and that's one that encompasses a, an unboxing as well and this time if you've been following the channel you may have already seen the post that I put up saying that I was going to review this the KNF concept mat box okay um, it's something that I've been thinking about for quite some time to be honest with you that is kind of doing a bit more video work with the Olympus EM1 or in fact the Sony a7 um, you know 1080p with the Sony is adequate for what I need to do um, it probably won't match the EM1 but it is something that I want to improve on and a matte box is not essential but it is a very desirable bit of kit so I thought what we would start off by doing is showing you how it comes uh, how it is supplied it comes in a really nice attractive box and if we just open it up I've got two cameras on the go here I've got the Osmo Pocket 3 filming me from this angle so you can see my wonderful face and I've got the GoPro up here <laughs> filming hopefully this fingers crossed and um, so inside the cardboard box as you can see it comes in a very nice shell case rigid a little bit of give in it but it's really really well presented uh, double zipped and it has a wrist strap here in the traditional KNF concept orange colouring and if we just unzip it here we have it now I'm just going to put the actual mat box down on the tabletop for a second and to stop them rattling around I'm going to take out the adapter rings that comes supplied with it because it makes explaining the whole thing rather easier there we go I'm just going to put the case to one side so here we have it this is the KNF concept mat box and um, you can buy it with different filters already attached now I opted for the one quarter black mist option um, I just felt that for an all round application the black mist would be probably the most useful for me um, you can buy it with so you can buy the matte box with an ND4 and an ND32 filter included uh, or you can as a third alternative you can buy it with an ND8 so those combinations may or may not be better for you as an individual uh, videographer um, but as I say I've opted for the black mist which is a very very subtle effect I have to <laughs> I have to warn you about that ahead of some of the uh, footage that you'll see in a bit um, anyway so quarter black mist is the one that I've got with it now The single most important thing about a matte box is that it has to be able to hold mats, which in the early days of uh, cinematography and videography would have been rectangular pieces of card or plastic uh, of various sizes to help reduce the amount of um, flare and image degradation that you get by uh, cutting out unwanted light and uh, I'll show you an example of one of those uh, while we're out and about using this thing but it comes in my case with one filter mounted and to access the filter and remove it there is this uh, bar on the side which just 
hinges up out of the way. And then if I can do it so that you guys can see it either using the GoPro or the Pocket 3, uh, one of the frames uh, that came with mine is empty. Nothing in that one whatsoever. And the other one has the industry standard um, 4 by 5.65 inch rectangular filter. Now, before I say anything else, and I'll probably waffle on about this during the course of the shoot that I did outdoors, uh, you can buy mat boxes which take circular filters and which take square filters as opposed to rectangular ones. Now, um, it's entirely up to you what you go for. Uh, if you are going to be making use of your existing stock of filters from your still photography, then it might be beneficial for you to go for a matte box that takes circular filters. I don't know. That's a decision that only you can make. What I can tell you is that an industry standard is 4 by 5.65 rectangle. And of course, if you think about it, uh, video and cinema is always horizontal or landscape format. One of the main reasons why industry standard is this rectangle. But you can buy different ones if you so wish. Um, okay, the KNF Concept um, map box comes with one of these, which is called a flag. And the flag is the second most important aspect of a map box because it allows you to control the light which is entering your lens in a much more flexible way than you can with a conventional lens hood and hopefully I'll be able to demonstrate that to you a little bit later when I've finished waffling on. Um, do not expect any sort of Steven Spielberg or David Attenborough quality of video out of me. What I did shoot was pretty appalling, but uh, it does show the benefits of having one of these fitted. Um, so that's called a flag. And the KNF Concept one has a single top flag. Now you can purchase other matte boxes which have flags on the side, which are more like barn doors. This just has the one. It's okay, you could say it's a little bit restrictive, but in practice, this is the most important thing that you're going to make use of when it comes to controlling unwanted light that's entering your lens. So that's the flag and it's lockable. So you can, um, it, at the moment, I've got it fairly free. Uh, this knob on the top is what allows you to lock it into place. Okay, so it doesn't flop down when you're actually filming. Uh, okay, so how do you attach this to your lens? Now, matte boxes, more professional ones, larger ones, and therefore much more expensive ones may feature a rod mounting system so you can fit it onto is it 14 or 15 mil metal rods uh, which come through uh, your camera's lens and into the matte box this doesn't have that this is intended to fit onto uh, the front of your lens now uh, one thing you will also notice when you get one of these is the size of the adapter just let me unlock it. Okay, so this is um, the adapter plate that I've been making use of. I've had to make use of this one. So this goes down to um, 67 millimeters. So the inner diameter here is 67. Now, none of my lenses are that large. So I had to invest in a couple of um, additional step down rings. I went for a 67 to 62 because that will fit onto a couple of my um, Olympus lenses, the 12 to 40 and I think possibly the Lumix 100 to 300, might be wrong on that one. And then I've also uh, ordered specifically a 67 to 49 millimeter which is what I use in the demonstration that you will see in a few minutes. 
but you need to think about that because the other adapters that you get with it are for even larger lenses. So this one, for example, is uh, that's the largest and it is 95 millimeters. I have to emphasize that this is sold and marketed as being a professional bit of kit. Do not be expecting uh, a, an in-depth instruction manual. You don't get any instructions with this whatsoever uh, because obviously whoever buys it is gonna have enough brains to work out how to use it without having um, instruction manual. Uh, the larger size of these also reinforces my point. It's a professional bit of kit because professional cinematographers and videographers will quite often have large diameter lenses and they need adapter plates that big. But you do get a selection of them. I just need to use this one. Uh, but you get one, two, three, five altogether. And um, so all I do is to simply choose the 67 mil, put my step down ring onto the back of it. So that's the 67 to 49 mil adapter on there. And then that simply pops into the circular hole in the back of the mat box and then it is locked in place by just clamping down on this screw here and it's firm okay now there will be occasions when you need to tilt this box and all you do is just slacken that off slightly and then you can rotate this on your camera it also features a number of additional threaded holes. You have in the top two uh, quarter inch 20, quarter inch Whitworth uh, tripod holes there threaded. So you can put cold shoe on there or a, a microphone holder, anything like that. There's also a three eighths hole in the top here. And on the back, not quite sure yet. I haven't worked out what these little brass ones are for. They're rather smaller. And then there's also a couple of um, threaded holes in the base for additional accessories. And that's it. It's basically carbon fibre with a um, lightweight construction, uh, very easy to make use of. And without me going into any more completely unnecessary drivel, let's take it outside and you can see it in practice. And I've come out today to my local park just to uh, put some footage through using the map box. I've got the Sony a7 which as for those of you that watch the channel will appreciate it's the mark 1 version and uh, it is mounted with the 50 millimeter 1.8 standard lens. Now what you might notice if I just rotate it slightly is that I have set the camera body as far back as I can on the Arca Swiss plate just to counterbalance the weight of the mat box. Um, it's not very heavy at all but um, this tripod was never intended for use in heavy duty video work so by moving the camera back from the centre of gravity of the ball head it just helps counterbalance this thing. Now you will have seen me do the unboxing and talk about the adapters that come with it. Uh, so this is the mounting plate which fits into the mat box. Uh, but what I find easier to do is to actually put the adapter onto the lens first because otherwise it's very easy to cross thread this which won't do your lenses any good. And there's no need to over tighten it and then we clamp the mat box to the adapter plate and all you do is loosen this screw here which opens this clamping ring around the mount tighten it down and then we are free to move this in any to any angle that we want really there we are
Okay, so it's firmly attached. Now I've positioned it here because as you can probably tell, we've got very strong winter sunshine coming through the, the trees over here. Now the KNF Concept map box uh, only comes with one flag and that's the metal plate that you can see on the front and to open it up you just loosen off the locking screw and then you can turn it to whatever position you want. Now other map boxes, more professional ones and also more expensive ones, will come with side flags uh, rather like barn doors. Um, the, this Kent Faith one, as I say, only comes with the top flag, which is what I wanted in particular because with low winter sun, uh, I have at least got more flexibility to shade the lens with this than I have with a conventional lens hood. So that's one very good reason why people use a matte box for video work. It's not essential, don't get me wrong. The, uh, regarding the main purpose of the map box, why is it called a map box? Well, that's because um, the more professional ones, uh, this one as well, you could actually put mats inside there and a mat is simply a frame which again helps to keep extraneous light out of the shot so you're cutting down on lack of contrast and flare. So the main purpose for the Kent Faith map box is that the one I ordered I specified to have the black mist filter and I'm just going to take some footage now. The sun is very low and it's shining more or less directly into the camera lens. I'm just going to switch it on. Now you may or may not be able to see the effect. I'm deliberately pointing it straight into the sun here. An ordinary lens hood would be absolutely no use whatsoever. Just let me play with this. Yeah, okay, so let me start filming. Can't see what I'm doing myself here. Okay, I think we're filming. And with the flag raised up out of the way, you can see that we're blowing out the sky completely. And as we bring the flag down, it increases the contrast and reduces the flare. If I bring it further down, you'll see that it's encroaching into the frame right there. So somewhere about there would be perfect, I think. Now, as I say, at the moment, we are filming using the black mist filter. And the black mist basically gives you slightly softer highlights. Now, if we wanted to keep the camera pointed in this direction, but the sun was in a different position, there's nothing to stop me from angling the shade in any orientation that I want, because the black mist filter isn't, it's not like a graduated filter. Now I'm just going to actually remove that filter. So apologies for moving the camera but that is now without the black mist filter and if I can I'll put um, I'll put a couple of adjacent clips up so you can see the difference without and with without and with so let me stop filming I'm going to clamp the filter back in because otherwise I'm going to drop it on the floor and it's all going to get covered in wet leaves and grass so that's that. I'm just going to put the cover frame in as well. 
and then I know that everything is back in place. There we go. So from the point of view of map boxes, is it worth the money? It is most definitely worth the money if you are what I guess people call a hybrid shooter. So you're using either a DSLR or a mirrorless camera which has video capabilities. If you fall into that category then this is ideal for you. So now I'm just going to shoot a little bit more footage around and about and see what we can come up with. Now a map box may not be essential for you. It's certainly going to be beneficial if you are going to do video seriously um, simply because you can interchange filters much more quickly than you can with a screw on type. That's why most map boxes don't accommodate circular filters or even square ones. Uh, you can get them but I think it's fair to say that the the most popular type are the ones that take these rectangular filters. Right, we're going to go and find some other autumn scenes to film, hopefully a bit more interesting than this last one. Now, although the original A7 is fairly archaic in terms of its video capability, nevertheless, it's 1080p. I'm shooting 25 frames a second at the moment. And I've brought out the Rode shotgun mic, the one that takes its power from the camera itself. And at least the camera does have uh, microphone input sockets, which is good. Now just let's see what we can get. So again, as you can probably tell, we've got very strong sunlight coming from the right hand side. So I'm going to angle this over slightly and in. Okay, I just want to try and demonstrate to you again. So I've moved the camera around slightly. The sun is, I'm looking straight into the sun now and I have got the map box tilted at an angle so that the flag is at about a, th what, 30, 45 degree angle to horizontal. And as I close it down, you can see the sky in the top right. getting a lot more contrast and detail until eventually we're right at the very edge there. If I were to close it down even more, we would be encroaching there, you see? So I hope it gives you an idea as to the flexibility of having the flag like that, much more useful and practical than any fixed lens hood. You might get away with similar results if you had a bellows hood, um, but this is even more flexible. And of course, because you can alter the angle of it infinitely, um, it doesn't really matter about the focal length of the lens that you're using, uh, because if it's a longer focal length than the 50 mil that I've got on there now, that means that you can easily close it down more because the angle of view of the lens is a lot narrower. Just going to pan it around 
so you'll have something to look at when we get back. Now bear in mind I've got the black mist on now. Now again, I must apologise for the fact I'm using a travel tripod with a ball and socket head. It should be a much more substantial video tripod with a fluid damped head. Um, so the most I can do is to rotate the camera slowly on the ball mount. Uh, but when it comes to tilting it up and down, that's when things go pear-shaped. So if you are going to be doing video to any serious degree, would I recommend a matte box? Mm, definitely. For those of you that remember watching perhaps films and TV series from the 50s and 60s when spies and soldiers were looking through binoculars, they would have had a binocular shaped mat in front here to emulate that. It always looks terrible and crappy, but there you are. Um, so yeah, I, I would definitely recommend one of these mat boxes if you're in the market and if you want to take your video up a notch. So there we are. I hope you get something interesting out of this and uh, we'll go back to the house and we can um, wrap up the video, I think. So there we are. I did say that do not expect any high quality videography. Um, it was really just to make the point and I hope you appreciate that. And I am, in all honesty, still getting used to using the Sony a7 IV video work. Um, I've used the EM1 Mark II a lot more often than the a7. But um, for some reason, the EM1 is missing. And I don't know where it is. Well, I do, but it's a secret. And I'll tell you about it in a future video, probably in the new year. Anyway, for now, I hope you enjoy your photography and your videography. And I will see you all really soon for another enthralling video. Bye bye for now.